Davis, and it's a pleasure to um, serve under your chairship, sir. Today I speak as both a proud Welshman and a proud Brit. These two identities are not incompatible. Rather, it is this ability to identify as both Welsh, Welsh and British that is one of the strengths of our union. Whether you are Welsh, Scottish, English, Cornish or a Yorkshireman, you can be all of the, these and still be British. Nationalists would have you believe that you cannot be both, that you must choose between being Welsh or British, but that, it is because but that is because nationalism is by its very definition divisive. While nationalists paint a very seductive image of an independent Wales that tugs on the heartstrings, their arguments tend to boil down to us versus them rhetoric, and they don't address fundamental questions around national security or the economy. National pride is deeply rooted in national prosperity and security. Economic strength is a foundation stone of national pride. And the fact is that this economic strength can be achieved only if the four nations of the UK club together and pool our resources. On that point, we I will give one. I'm agreeing entirely with him on the point he's making, but no, his party in the Senate is in a coalition by any other name with the nationalists and have started a commission which is admitted looking at independence. Would he reflect on that? I think I remember his intervention. Uh, it's not a coalition, is the first point. Uh, and the second point is that we are delivering a progressive agenda for the country under the leadership of Welsh Labour government. Together, we are so much more than our component parts. Being patriotic and acting in the national interest is very different to nationalism. Nationalists don't have an answer about how they would plug the funding gap if Wales were to leave the UK, or how Wales would protect itself from external threats. And nationalism doesn't automatically mean decisions being made closer to the communities they impact, as we've seen with the SNP, who have centralised power in Edinburgh, leaving Holyrood one of the most centralised administrations in Europe. Britain remains a significant economy and world power, and Wales benefits from being part of that. It gives us a much stronger voice on the world stage, and it allows for money from wealthier parts of the UK to be redistributed to Welsh communities, in principle, if we had a government in Westminster that was actually delivering on that. As we live in an era of great power competition, and with increasing threats, Wales is safer and more secure as part of the UK, protected by UK-wide national security organisations and by our armed forces, which include Welsh regiments. To overcome the forces that want to break up the Union, we need a positive and patriotic vision for Britain, one that doesn't take reckless risk with the economic and national security, but instead promotes reciprocity, cooperation and solidarity across our nations and regions. Over the last few years, we've seen how Wales being part of the Union is not only good for Wales, but good for the Union too. The NHS is one of the great examples of this, an institution with Welsh roots that has benefited for the whole of the UK. It's been at the front line of this pandemic and the vaccine rollout has been a resounding success in Wales, a testament to the hard work of our NHS staff. But let's remember they've also been able to call on the support of the UK Armed Forces to help with the rollout when needed. I will be brief. This speech um, is so good that I'm worried that the Honourable Gentleman might get in trouble uh, for, from, from his own side. But can I just ask you one further question, which is, does it worry him as much as it worries us that Adam Price, the coalition uh, slash uh, cooperation bed, bedmate of Mark Fakewood, describes the arrangement in Cardiff as a down payment on independence uh, and uh, leading to inde an independent wealth sooner rather than later? Does that worry him? A great deal of respect for the Secretary of State, but I'm afraid his intervention has just, for me, encapsulated the problem with this whole debate, which has been about blame game, blame game, throwing mud. I am making, I am making a case for the values upon which our union is founded. And I think it's the responsibility of all of us in this room to stop the blame game and to actually work together in the national interest. In the national interest. As I've already said, we have a government in Wales which is delivering a progressive Welsh Labour agenda. That is absolutely clear. And that's based on the resounding victory that we secured at the last uh, Welsh Senate election. More recently, when the UK government ran short of lateral flow tests, it was the Welsh government that came to their aid, providing four million lateral flow tests. The UK government should never have run short, but that is how cooperation should work within the Union. 
The union is far from perfect, and Brexit and the pandemic have exposed the cracks in our constitutional settlement. It's revealed a central government in Westminster that hasn't been listening enough, and nations and regions have feel that they are at best not consulted and at worst ignored. The relationship between the four governments should be based on a partnership of equals, mutual respect, and be fair. The UK government's Internal Market Act, which seeks to prevent the emergence of unwanted barriers to trade within the UK, ended up undermining powers devolved to the Scottish and Welsh governments. This may seem like a political argument, but it goes to the very heart of what many see as what's wrong with the union, a sense of unfairness and inequality. This inequality runs much deeper, despite the UK government's talk of levelling up. There remains an economic divide in the country which is continuing to grow. With wealth and power concentrated in London and the South East, many in communities in Wales feel left behind, and that system doesn't work for them. It's led to growing disillusionment with Westminster, which is seen as being out of touch with, la with large swathes of the country, which in turn plays into the hands of the nationalists. If the union is to continue, it needs to modernise. It must mean something tangible to people now and in the future. The union needs to reflect the desire to have power closer to the people. It should encapsulate common beliefs and ideals, and it needs to celebrate the rich histories and identities of different nations and regions. Because Britain cannot have a shared future without having shared values. We need to build a positive and patriotic narrative about what it means to be both Welsh and British now and in the future. It must reflect the values, the aspirations and the experiences that we all have in common, whilst also recognising and celebrating the uniqueness of being Welsh. A well-functioning union must include everyone, with no one person or group left behind. Wales's future is best served by having strong devolution so that decisions made about Wales are made in Wales, and by being an equal partner in a strong and revitalised United Kingdom. Belligerent behaviour from the UK government, disparaging comments from ministers about the nations and regions, and a Prime Minister who's described devolution as the biggest mistake of the last Labour government, is doing more to damage and undermine the union whilst nationalists cheer from the sidelines. Like other proud Welshmen and women, I will be cheering on Wales when the Six Nations begins next month. I will be right behind the Welsh football team when they take on Austria as they bid to qualify for the World Cup. I'll be cheering on Wales athletes competing in the Commonwealth Games this summer as I cheered them on at the Tokyo Olympics last summer when they represented the United Kingdom. I will also proudly wear a daffodil to, wear Saint, to mark St David's Day. None of this makes me less, any less British and being British doesn't make me any less Welsh. George Orwell said that patriotism is a devotion to something that is always changing and yet is felt to be mystically the same. It is the bridge between the future and the past. Mr Davis, if we cherish the union, then we must be willing to change and to modernise it. Thank you.